this is going to help me out in figuring out what new MMOs I can play for my eight month long video in 2024. I uh, got a lot of comments in the last video. People tired of me talking about MMOs that are 10 years away from release. And you know what? I get it. I like learning and talking nice. about these projects, but I understand it can be a bit of a drag, uh, knowing mm -hmm. many of them are at least half a decade Whoa, away. So on. let's talk about the MMO. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just realized something. Let's just fix this quick. That's how I'll do it. But let's see what Force has MMOs to say. MMOs coming out right now. Today's video will focus entirely on new MMOs scheduled to launch in 2024. We did hmm. a similar one earlier in the year, but since... Hey, that's Dune. Um, <laughs> I've seen some concerning stuff about that. Um, Throne in Liberty was what he showed before. As far as I'm aware, that's still a mess, but I'd, I haven't tried it out, so I can't have like a personal opinion. Since then, timelines have shifted, some games got pushed out, others moved up, and we've had a few new surprises as well. So 2024's new MMOs, what are they, when can you play them, and do we expect any of them to be any good? Which will Wait. probably depend on your definition of good. So, alright, as of this recording, we actually have 8 MMOs scheduled to release in 2024. Now, I'm sure we won't actually get all 8 of them this year, but this is what's on the docket, and let's start off with the ones that I think have the best chance of Okay, okay, we can play a game here and see which ones are likely to get delayed actually hitting their target the one that appears actually most likely to launch the soonest believe it or not is taurus land this is the game that notoriously got its <laughs> uh, taurus land the the wow knockoff from china you know what? this one's gonna be a funny one this one's gonna be a really funny one um it might be worth playing because if i play this one for a month in my big video this will lead to the most insane workout sessions in the fucking world. Because, oh my Jesus Christ, is it gonna be scuffed? Start in response to Blizzard pulling World of Warcraft out of China. They said, fine, we'll make our own WoW, and that appears to be precisely what they have done. Not to say that this is a direct one-for-one -one copy, because it's not, but boy, you can certainly Wait, see- Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I wanna not, see not that. Not to say that this- um okay far less skills um a, a lot of this is personalized um add-ons that, that have changed things but this to me looks more like somewhere between uh star wars the old republic and final fantasy than it does wow but the gameplay might be exactly the same as wow this is a direct one-for-one -one copy because it's not, but boy, you can certainly see some of the similarities. That aside though, it is a new MMO and it's launching very soon. Just the other week on their official Discord, they posted this announcement. Taurus Land is nearing its official release and pre-registration is available now on the Google Play Store, oh. Apple App Store, and oh. our official oh. website. Now currently- oh. You see that? You see that? Disgusting absolutely disgusting what this means is that this is a fucking phone game it's not an mmo it's a phone game Th that's official website that's the now currently we see an expected launch date listed as june 23rd although they have said that that is not set in stone it does give us a rough timeline it is also coincidentally the only actual listed date we have for any of these games on this list everything else is pretty much just Ooh. a target year and target quarter that's listed Ooh. without any ha having an actual official okay so this one's got an official launch date which means it's probably coming on the day also because um, this is being made in China, so if they don't keep to schedule, what's going to happen to these guys is they're going to, um, yeah, they're going to throw those people into the, the re-education camp for not getting it done on time launch day and month so yes taurus land does appear like it is the most concrete launch date that we have at the moment now in terms of my expectations well i've heard okay but not phenomenal things from the early testing none of the impressions that i've seen have come away super enthused about the game it does appear to be a fairly by the numbers theme park mmo with the typical offerings you'll follow a main story quest level up through different zones doing dungeons along the way dungeons are as you expect them uh clear through enemies fight a boss and collect loot to these mm. common multiple difficulties there are 10 person raids world bosses daily quests solo tower climbs pvp battlegrounds and arenas now those are the general content types but overall again i've not heard terribly great things unfortunately it seems like the combat well yeah of course you haven't heard good things this is a phone game uh let's see q e r t y 
one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all the buttons you got to press. Now, I'm not, I'm not against a game that's got a low technical difficulty like that. Um, but what it indicates to me usually is that they're trying to make a game that someone who has fat little thumbs on the subway can play isn't very good it feels floaty and not that impactful it very much so looks and feels like a mobile game that's getting ported to pc because well that's what it is i think yep. it's no coincidence that they listed the uh, mobile stores before they listed the website pc version of the game in their announcement and the game is cross-platform for mobile and pc so you will be playing with mobile users and i've heard complaints about oh. this as well being that they oh Oh, I have to share a server with disgusting mobile players? Oh. Oh. I don't communicate very well because they're on a phone and they don't do mechanics either. Pay to win also looks to be a guarantee <laughs> despite what the developer has said. It's uh -huh. got an energy system tied to crafting. There the game uses the typical two currency model with silver rewarded from- No guys, it's not pay to win. Just because you can buy money and gold, it's not pay to win. Guys, I mean, you have to work to get items. You have to work your fingers on your credit card that you're entering into your phone, uh, which means it's not pay to win because technically I'm still working really, really hard stealing my mom's card. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Doing quest achievements daily and week. I bet you. Okay, so I bet you this. I've been thinking about this for a while because I cannot believe I'm saying this and used to buy stuff in the game from vendors but then there is gold the currency used solely for buying items from the player auction house and while there are a few ways to collect gold in the game you can also buy it from the cash shop Ugh. and that appears to be the best way Ugh. even from the beta it appears like the amount of gold that you own will be the have the biggest impact on your overall power progression they were also selling monthly subscriptions with boost rewards think along the same oh there you go battle pass oh of course of course, we needed a battle pass. Lines of what Otherwise, they do in not ESO a real game. or in Lost Ark. They were selling those in the closed beta test for a beta <laughs> selling monthly subscriptions. Oh they couldn't even wait to hit us with the microtransactions until the game released. They started in the beta. I mean, look, none of this is surprising or even that unusual from many Eastern MMOs, but it is funny given that early on, Taurus Land was advertising the game by saying very upfront, it's going to be a non-pay to win MMO. That line was in uh -huh. every video description, their socials, website, everywhere, but it is clearly going to very much so be yet another pay to win MMO. <gasps> You're telling me, you're telling me that game devs go online and lie? No. No, it's not true. No. Game devs would never do that to us. Game devs for MMOs especially would never do that to us. Especially the Eastern ones. They'd, no, I, I don't believe it. Absolutely unbelievable. This is slanderous. Oh, but you know what? The game isn't out yet, and I will reserve final judgment until actually playing through and experiencing it myself. But yes, it does seem like we're getting another run-of-the-mill Eastern MMO loaded with progression tied to the cash shop. Not to single out Taurus Land, though, because there's a few games on this list that fill that exact description. But okay, okay, I'll, I'll give Taurus Land this, right? There's what's a few games here? on this list that fill that exact... What, you see that right there? What's happening there? That's illegal in the West. Right, so this is the these are the paths you get to choose now. Is you can either go with Eastern MMOs where they rape your wallet, or you can go with Western MMOs where they rape your sanity. Right? Do you see that? They I can't believe the bravery these guys have to put tits on a woman. I mean, that's illegal in the West. This game will never sell. Never sell boobs on a woman? Never. How dare they? Disgusting. <laughs> Uh, that's only saving grace of those games. At least Eastoids oh, uh, only want your money, not your fealty. Yeah, okay. Each of them has their problems. I don't know why it's so fucking hard for game devs to realize that all you have to really do is make a good, attractive-looking game. I'm sorry, but this this is a simple fact. If I'm playing an MMO, I do not... I, okay, unless it's character creator. Unless there's, like, a character creator that I can, like... Um, I can very specifically go and look at that um, allows me to create an abomination of a character. I do not want to see a character or an NPC that looks like me, that has my body build in an MMO. That shit is not attractive. 
right? I don't need to look at a mirror. I've got one in the bathroom. If I want to get depressed for the day, I'll go do that instead. Make your characters hot, goddammit. Back description. But Tarzan also, from what I've heard, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a particularly good game. But again, I will reserve judgment until actually having played it. The next MMO- He's going to reserve judgment until they pay him a nice stack of cash. Then, then he'll decide after that. Oh, that looks to be almost certainly coming out this year is Once Human. They've been Ooh. steadily ramping up testing for the game, holding a month-long beta back in December, with another one currently underway, running from now up through middle of May. The game is scheduled to launch in the third quarter of this year, which would put it sometime between July. Okay, interesting. I'm looking at the UI. It doesn't look too phone gamey. I need more information on this one. This one's not been on my radar at all. Um... Gives mild PUBG vibes. You can tell because there's Russian in the, the chat. Uh, yeah, this, this, I don't know, maybe this is good. Uh, the problem with this, right? The problem I'm seeing immediately, just looking at this, is why would an FPS player want to play this instead of playing uh, Tarkov? Or, I don't know, even Destiny, right? It's, it's, it's hard to justify that unless this game does something very, very special that those games aren't doing. But maybe, maybe we'll learn about that now. Maybe I'm jumping the gun here. July and September. Although this is not a traditional MMORPG, it does check enough of the boxes and is of personal interest to me that I wanted to include it here. This is an open world third person looter shooter that caught my attention as it feels like a mix of The Division, Defiance, and Secret Worlds, all games that I personally really enjoyed in the past. You've got an open world with heavy sci-fi theming full of otherworldly enemies and set pieces with all of the usual activities found in the genre. You'll go around doing PvE stuff, fighting enemies and bosses, collecting materials and loot, Okay, why did, why did that scene specifically just look like New World with guns? As you explore, you'll stumble across a variety of points of interest and content. There are strongholds, which are like the primary form of PvE activity while you level up. The various set locations all around the map full of enemies and objectives to clear. And even a fair bit of- Wait, wait, Force was live streaming this yesterday and, and you personally don't like it. Wait, isn't this the game where I've seen there's a clip where it's like there's a Thomas the Tank Engine thing and it's like walking through a city on legs. Is that, is that the, is this the same one? Because maybe I have seen this before and I just forgot the name. Uh, you personally don't like it. I mean, I would take your judgment because you've seen uh, gameplay. I, I, this has not been on my radar. Puzzle and riddle solving mixed Maybe in, which beyond the sci-fi theming, this part in particular really reminded me of Secret World. Uh, world events include things like bosses that roam around. There's a spider bus, houses with legs and space whales, ah, King yes, of the Hill style fun. horde modes, and then all sorts of uh, events tied to unique locations. There are dungeons called silos. You move through clearing enemies, fighting a boss at the end for loot. And then there are large instance boss fights referred to as monoliths. These are separate from the dungeon bosses and tend to be more difficult and include several phases with more valuable rewards. Beyond that, the world is full of small mm. camps of enemies, all sorts of points of interest, uh, NPC towns with vendors and side quests. There's also a variety of PvP from points of interest that turn contested, letting you fight other players to entire servers that if you choose to play on will be full on PvP with base attack and defense mechanics as well. And then in addition to all of those MMO and looter shooter things, the game also has a lot of survival elements like stamina, sanity, hydration, and hunger. Uh, so this okay so this is a mixture of fps mmo survival um i would want to know server size i would want to know the interactions you have with other players i would want to know what what pay to win mechanics are in the background of this and i'd want like the only thing i've seen so far is man running with gun and shooting things i want to know like what other things you can do in this game because i'm seeing very samey footage here but ah. Uh, I'll have to dig into this one more. Uh, that's the, you have to farm the rift to level up New World vibe indeed. Yeah, I think it's just the, the hentai tentacle coming out the ground. That makes me, it makes me think of New World. Like, maybe I'm just making comparisons to that. Uh, especially since I had to, um, earlier today, get some clips from New World. So I actually had to log into that game 
Um, because even in my Guild Wars 2 episode 2 that I'm working on right now, I'm shitting on New World. Hunger meters to maintain and full on base building with as much variety as any survival game. And these bases can be built pretty much anywhere except for roads and right near points of interest. You're going to see player built bases all over the place in the open hmm. world. The game's also got plenty of progression available besides the leveling up. You've got crafting of gear and mods along with blueprints. Or hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back to that screen. Hold on. Let's see. Backpack gear cradle. What is cradle? Is that the pay to win shop or not? Blueprints, mods, cosmetics. Okay, so there's there's some of the, the visual pay to win. Uh cradle. I want to Available know what that besides is. the leveling up, you oh, oh, okay. the crafting of gear and mods along with blueprints. He keeps putting his mouse over cradle and then not clicking on cradle, which makes me suspicious. Prints or cradle oh, yeah, and deviations and provide all sorts. I don't know if you guys have, have got this, but I've been blitzed by those new ads for that, um, the next version of Wish.com called Timu. Uh, yeah, this is the division Timu style. Of perks and special powers. And it's in a few of these crafting and progression systems where the possibility of future pay to win seems like it might exist. Although it's currently not in the beta version of the game, it could mm. make its way at some point and launch or sometime after at least. Okay, the possibility there is there, especially with the huge number of currencies and resources in the game that gate power pro progression. Although the developer has very adamantly said on many occasions there will be no pay to win, that uh -huh. might also depend on their definition of the. Yeah, uh huh. Pay to win, uh-huh. Yeah, there won't be any pay to win, guys. There's never any pay to win. Yeah, you know what? I hate these fucking idiots who do this thing where they're like, no, no, that's not our definition of pay to win. No, the definition of pay to win is any form of progression or advancement that you get over other players where you can buy back your time from the game. That is pay to win. End of story. Now, you can put pay to win on a scale of fucking egregious, worse than the Holocaust, all the way to like, eh, it's barely noticeable. But all of that is still pay to win term it is certainly the case where they could at a moment's notice swap over uh, anytime i play a game that decides to have like 50 different currencies in it tied to all sorts of different activities and progression yeah, and thousands and thousands of menus for you to click through to uh, obtain those currencies uh, that sets off alarm bells almost immediately i mean there's even already in-game gotcha mechanics that are tied to the highest rarity blueprints so yeah we will see what happens if pay to win in any variation ever comes into once human i do quite like the video game portion of the game though like once human is fun to play it's filled of interesting content and that's why i have been playing it once more yes a current round of beta testing is taking place it started on april 5th and is said to be running right up through mm -hmm. the middle of may a little over a month long there may. do appear to be plenty of opportunities to get in if you're interested in maybe if i can get into this one i'll play this for but i don't know if i'll last four weeks playing this game that's my concern is if i'm doing an eight month long video that's gonna like be tied to like workouts that I'm doing literally six days a week. I don't know if I will last playing this game for four weeks. Then checking it out for yourself and the full release version is scheduled for the third quarter in 2024. Next up, we have got Throne and Liberty. So this one also seems certain to release this year. We're just not exactly sure as of yet when, but it is already out in Korea as of last December and the global launch is planned for some point this year. So closed beta testing <laughs> of the global version is actually starting this week. It's going to be fairly brief oh, beginning on Wednesday, April 14th and lasting until the 17th. This is a confidential test and will be under NDA. Sh shit, so they there's a test that starts two week, two days from now, but the problem is it's a confidential test, so you're not allowed to say anything, which uh, invalidates the point of me playing the game, because if I, I play the game, I'm going to want to talk about it. I'm going to want to say something about it, and if it's bad, then I'm going to get angry, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some shit, and I'm going to be upset because I'm going to be really pissed off that graphics this good are marred by shitty gameplay. Ah, uh, that that's okay, so the next don't one. Don't expect to see any streams or videos. But again, the game has already launched in Korea, and we're not expecting a whole lot to change beyond localization and maybe a few minor adjustments. The content should pretty much be exactly the same. So, Throne and Liberty is a more traditional theme park MMO. It's got a massive, seamless open world with no loading screens and tons of players. Wait, isn't this the game that's also got that massive auto battler problem, where it's like you just leave your character to like farm xp and then you just disappear so you're rewarded by not playing the game
Uh, next on Amazon West Publisher, no Steam release, Nintendo level NDA, ESG client event. Yeah, that all of the, you see, the problem is that's all the management around it, right? I don't mind, I've been thinking about this, I don't mind Amazon as a publisher. What I don't like is whenever Amazon puts their fucking finger in the pie or their finger on the scale and decides, no, no, we've got to change this about the game. Oh, there's tits and ass in the game. We 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 better cover that up. Oh, there's um there's feet showing. Well, that's fine. Um, Amazon has this weird thing where in the West they try and like censor the shit out of games uh, and change the original meaning of the art in a game. So that's what concerns me is they always feel like meddling with something or the original product. And then saying, no, no, we're doing this for the West, when what they're doing is they're making a shittier version of the same game, graphically speaking. But whenever Amazon publishes something, man, they, they do not have a good track record. Whenever they make something themselves, I mean. But yeah, all of that is concerning. What you've said, Selm, about like Nexon, uh, uh, no Steam release, the NDA, um, and ESG especially. But I think I've got to try it myself. Cause I like, I, I've got to say this, I like the UI. I like the way the UI looks, right? I like the graphical style of this. It's just, I don't know if I'm going to like the game. There's I, I, I mean, I might just be looking at a shiny piece of shit here. I have seen clips with easily one to 200 people in a single area. There's diverse and varied terrain to explore with traversal mechanics that really reward that exploration. You've got the ability to glide, a grapple hook, and mantling onto most of the terrain. There's the typical assortment of MMO quests and activities, open world public events for both PvE and PvP, a few varieties of dungeons, including open world dungeons that can house any number of players, and traditional instance dungeons for groups of up to six. There are 15 mm. field bosses located throughout the open world, World, solo boss tower climbs there's open world pvp okay there's 15 field bosses okay but are we talking like are we talking sargaris is walking around or are we talking like these are blue protocol everyone is going to be farming this boss you better make sure that you do a certain percentage of damage to this thing so that you get a loot reward otherwise you're screwed kind of like world bosses like, how epic are the world bosses going to be? And is 15 going to be enough? P, where certain zones become flagged over time. A big focus on guild play in this as well. It's pretty much required, actually, for much of the higher tier content in both PvE and PvP. And okay, that's plenty good. of progression systems and reward tracks from leveling and gear enchanting, a battle pass and codex system, login rewards, and those guild rewards. There's a lot of different things to work towards and spend your time doing. Now, as mentioned, the Korean version of the game launched last December and was met with pretty much the reception we expected. The game itself seems good. The combat has improved, and it's got a lot of interesting and varied content to do. But okay, well, that's good. Okay, I'm glad to say that he's saying that the game has improved, um, because maybe maybe they got a kick in the ass, um, because the last time I saw people talking about um, Throne and Liberty, everyone was shitting on it for its systems and the way you locked in place. So maybe that's been improved. But I, I don't know. I really like the graphical style of this. I really like the graphical fidelity here. I like the way the UI is set out. I feel like this is a very clean, decisive way of doing things. I just, I don't know if it's, it's going to live up to the hype or whether this is going to be another game that people play for like a month and then just never give a fuck about again. The spare mortals, the horsemen of the apocalypse, as a Yeah, no, you know what? Of of the four horsemen, Amazon seems to be death. <laughs> Amazon rolls in is like, you got any games for me to kill, buddy? <laughs> hey, bud, I heard you were working on a game. How do you feel like me killing that? <laughs> Also, it is super pay to win. Well, surprise, surprise, deja vu here. Uh, there are some parts of the progression that can't be swiped for, but many oh, of them shit. can. Like most free to play MMOs, Throne in Liberty does have two currencies, the Solent, the earned in game currency, and then Lucent, the purchased one with real money. Now, Lucent can technically be farmed in game by not spending in the sense that you can find items and then post them on the auction house in exchange for Lucent that other players purchased. However you get Lucent though, you'll be able to purchase nearly everything in the game with it and that Oof. is where the pay to win comes in the two main Oof. things that there you go 
Due to the success of New World, Amazon have been selected by Nexon, Tencent, and NZ Software Local. <laughs> Due to the success, oh man, if that's success, god damn it, I I should be as big as Asmund Gold if that's what's considered success. Holy shit, I'm I'm killing it apparently. I'm like the world's biggest streamer. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if if New World populate, like I have more subscribers than New World has a population. That's terrifying. That's that's fucking terrifying to think about. Um, fuck me. The people want to buy with the premium currency is the base level versions of gear, but more importantly, the materials used to upgrade and enhance that gear, including even being able to purchase the in-game currency Solent by breaking down items that you purchase with Lucent. As of today, it seems like even the biggest, most ardent fans of Throne and Liberty in Korea admit that it is without a doubt a very pay-to-win game, uh -huh. but they still enjoy it despite it, which is a growing trend in the genre with but a rare few exceptions. Personally, I am looking forward to the content and playing the game, spending time exploring the world, checking out everything it has to offer. But unless drastic changes are made, I suspect I will be leaving before not too long. Once my gear progression being gated behind either weeks or uh, weeks of grinding or seconds worth of swiping, <laughs> that is when I am most certainly likely to check out. Throne in Liberty Global does appear to be on track for release sometime later this year. The next game on the list might not meet me. Uh, okay, so I'll, I will try Throne in Liberty out, right? I, I don't think it's going to hold my attention for too long, especially because pay-to-win games always put annoying systems in their game. They ruin the gameplay so that they can make um, a fuck ton of money off of a Saudi prince or uh, a Wall Street banker who thinks that he's like hot shit because he can swipe a card. But I'll give it a try. I'll at least give it a try. Even if it just it's just there to make me mad many of your qualifications for an MMO, but the developer themselves are calling it one. I'm talking about Dune Awakening. This is described as an open world survival oh, sandbox MMO. Developed by Funcom, who have said that they're looking to take the past 20 years of experience in both of these genres and bring them together. There will be a heavy survival focus, the usual loop of starting with nothing, venturing out, gathering basic resources to craft basic tools, to build basic crafting stations that let you progress to the next tier to gather better resources and make better tools for better stations. So on and so on there's base okay so i'm i'm a massive dune simp right i'm a massive dune simp right to the point that i'm gonna say something that's gonna piss a lot of people off i'm not a fan of the um the dune 2 movie i'm not a fan of dune 1 either i think as standalone movies if they weren't tied to the dune franchise they could be good but I, i'm just not a fan of it because I feel like it altered the original purpose of, of um, Frank Herbert's work. And I feel like it, it um, took away a lot from what he did. And so I'm like a, a hardcore Dune fanboy. And I think because of what they did in Dune 2, um, the, they're going to have a lot of fucking trouble telling a full Dune story. They will not be able to do that. I think the fri franchise will flounder at some point and they just... Uh, it'll just be a fuck up. It'll be like Game of Thrones where it's like... Magically somehow Paul is just automatically the new um, God Emperor of Dune. Um, and they won't explain it and he'll just be a worm person now. Um, spoilers for people who don't know what that is. But I, I'm, I'm forced by my simpery to try out Dune Awakening. But some of the gameplay I've seen has me concerned. It's building with all the usual offerings. They've taken the foundation of their prior game, Conan Exiles, and added and expanded upon it. There's even vehicle construction. In fact, vehicles are going to play a fairly large role in the game, as you have to use them to traverse the sands and avoid other players, as well as the sandworms. As per the Dune universe, sandworms are a constant threat and have been implemented to act as a tension mechanic, forcing players to think about their actions for fear of drawing their attention. If you make too much noise, if you move too much across the sand, if you drive large vehicles for too long, the worms will inevitably arrive and you can't defeat them, you must only run from them. Combat itself will be in third person, it's an action shooter game, you'll pick from a wide array of crafted weapons, gadgets, vehicles, gear, and abilities from the different great schools of the Imperium, which are basically your class selection. This will be tied into progression. Okay, who, who are they gonna have? 
So obviously they're going to have House Atreides. They'll have House Harkonnen. That'll definitely be there. Will they do something? Uh, I, I wonder if they'll put in a third faction. And if they do, it'll either be House X or it'll be... Um, they might decide to go off script, which if you played the really, really old Dune strategy games was not a bad idea because um, they went off script and they added in House Ordos and House Ordos was fucking cool. Um, so that might be a, a way to add in a third faction, but it might just be dual faction. Uh, it's a 50 players per server with uh, server with survival battle royale element. Just play it. Oh my God. Aggression. You see that, that fucking ruins it right there is that there's only 50 players per server. You've got an entire desert and there's only 50 other people running around it. That, that's annoying. That's really irritating leveling your character, unlocking new abilities for the different classes as you progress. As for the MMO elements, for one, they have said servers will support thousands of players simultaneously and features an end game that centers around large scale. Thousands of players simultaneously. That's what they're saying. I hope that's the case. Uh, how many players uh, per Dune MMO server? Uh, Dune Awakening Q&A. We have multiple maps in the game, a survival map, uh, desert map, social hubs. They are all separate maps running their own Unreal server, and they have all different amounts of players. Social map, 200 players. Deep desert map, 500 players. Sadly, we haven't got a clear answer beyond the claim that Dune Awakening will be world... A world shared with thousands of players answer is unclear so i guess i'll see that when there's more information on this but yeah i'm i'm going to be very hypercritical of this because i love the dune franchise and i i worry that i'm going to be unfairly hypercritical on this like i will see minor things and get cranky but if it's big things then yeah fuck that that's going to piss me off combat what they are calling combined arms with groups of players split into factions fighting for resources in all out ground and air warfare from what they have shown and said this does appear to be similar to the sort of experience you get from battlefield or planet side style of large scale combat there are also npc bases called outposts for you to scout infiltrate and clear world events like ships falling from the sky full of valuable resources to be scavenged or large military vessels that scan the planet at night that you have to avoid beyond various camps and other points of interest you also have straight up dungeons in the game called echo labs full of enemies and bosses sometimes you'll even find interesting experiments puzzles and obstacles to overcome the world will be divided into sections with safe and hostile regions in those hostile areas you'll find the most valuable resources and loot but also there is full-on pvp which includes friendly fire and then there are some specific areas of the game that are subject to what are called the shifting sands mechanic where once a week sandstorms roll through and completely change the landscape wiping out player up post revealing new points of interest and resource so once a week server wipe and the excuse is um uh sandstorms essentially that uh, i may be able to play that for four weeks for my um for my big video conan exiles is very good uh i never played conan exiles so i can't judge it that's why i think this one i'm probably going to reserve judgment until i actually play the game but I don't know, it's hard to say. I shouldn't say my opinion um, on this until I actually play it because I want to experience it firsthand, even if it is shit. I want to, like, feel this game. I want to feel the sand between my cheeks. They have Sodokar woman, just saying. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were against murdering women in the fields. <laughs> that just sounds like you get to... That, that just sounds like if Sodokar players... You need to have um, both men and women for that because you don't need to gender lock characters. That's, that kind of sucks. Um, other than that, eh, I kind of expect that from MMOs and the whole ESG thing. It doesn't... Like, I, I've given up on that fight. I'll fight against pay to win until I die, but I, I ESG, there's no winning that battle. You know, Sweet Baby fell and like a million other disgusting parasites popped up in its place and it's never going away.
locations, this is actually a really cool sounding feature. I do quite like what we've learned about Dune Awakening so far, although I do want to mention there has as of yet been no public NDA free testing, so I have not seen or read any first on impressions. That said, they are targeting a 2024 early access release, and it does seem like they're on track. In fact, a few weeks ago, I got a hands-off presentation, and what I saw looked pretty good. Now, it was hands-off, which it means I wasn't playing the game, I've not played the game, but I did see gameplay. I saw the game running in action, and I did like what I saw, but again, it's not quite the same. You know, I have to pick like eight different MMOs, right? Um... I have to pick eight different MMOs. So I think I will I will play the Dune one. Uh, also, I'm simping for Dune. So like keep that in mind. I'm simping for, for Dune. So I definitely will play this one. Uh Sardaukar men only Bene Gesserit woman. I'm I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing a Bene Gesserit dude. <laughs> He's just, he's just in a nun robe and his cock's hanging out. <laughs> it's just, every time he runs, his fucking schlong's bouncing up and down in the dress they wear. <laughs> oh, fuck, that'll be funny. ...is playing yourself, so we have to wait until that actually happens. Some cool ideas here, though. I like the concept, and I am looking forward to checking it out. Also, this is one of the few MMOs launching this year that doesn't appear primed to be full of pay-to-win on its release, which makes it a bit of a standout, which is also pretty sad in it <laughs> uh, beta signups are available now testing is expected to start in the coming months and again the early access release is scheduled for later this year all right next up we've got pax day so this Ooh. one is claiming for an early access release in the spring which in order for them to hit would have to be within the next few months here uh this is an open okay people really really liked pax day um based on the footage i've seen and, and the reviews i saw so this might be one to consider but what i've heard is that pax day is more of a a survival game like a multiplayer survival game than it is an mmo uh but maybe i've got that wrong pax day is terrible i still don't know if pax day is an mmo or solo a solo only game as far as i've seen i've seen people build like these massive superstructures um in pax day uh all working as a group um i don't know i've seen some of the gameplay i've heard some people say they enjoy the fuck out of it uh, New Gash is saying it's terrible. I have this is another one where it's like I I don't know what to say about this because I need to experience this. This is like um, Throne in Liberty is probably going to be a mess. Uh, I'm leaning like okay, so let's see. Terrace Land I I want to laugh at because it's a fucking phone game. Once Human um, I'm more negative than positive. Throne in Liberty I'm more negative than positive. Dune Awakening, I'm hesitant to say that I'm neutral 50-50 on this one, but I do also want to, um, I do want to try because I'm a massive Dune simp. I'm compromised. I'm fucking compromised when it comes to that. Uh, as for PAX Day, I, I think I'm 50-50 on that. Open world survival sandbox MMO with a massive focus on community. In fact, every building in the game will be player built. The economy will be entirely player run. There aren't even traditional MMO uh, NPCs or quest givers in the game. There are enemies to fight and such, but there aren't NPCs that you chat with to learn about the lore or to do quests for. None of that. This is a game that leans very heavily into the sandbox camp of the genre. Now, part of the reason I'm yeah, uncertain about this launch here is that the last test they held in November was pretty bare bones with just the fundamentals of gathering, crafting, base building, and very basic combat. The game just didn't seem anywhere near complete enough for even an early access launch. That said though, it was intentionally limited. That was the point. Specifically, it was designed to test those elements. And in the five months since then, they have seemingly made some good advances. So maybe they do very well launch into early access soon in the... So that's, that's a good sign to me. I always like when... Um... When you've got a game that's like, it's not complete, someone comes along and starts shitting on their game after playing like an alpha or beta test, and then they start improving things. I, I always like that. I always like a game dev who actually listens, um, even if they don't always get it right. I think that it's better that they listen than they just pretend like um, 
you know mmo players or players of these games know fucking nothing about the game that they're playing like they'll say a certain mechanical system is shit and then the game dev will just completely ignore that and be like you don't know what you're talking about like that's the most fucking egregious thing ever looks like dragon's dogma too i mean it kind of does right it's it's not just me it does kind of look like dragon's dogma too spring as they are projecting. In fact, a recent posted a little breakdown of what they've worked on in the time since the last alpha. They've revamped their RPG and stat systems from different types of damage to the introduction of durability mechanics. They've also enhanced the depth and complexity of gameplay with spells, special attacks, and procs added to the game. They've enhanced animations as well for weapons to try to ensure combat feels more impactful. They've improved targeting for both melee and range and done some general balancing for items and enemy stats. Okay, you say that this looks like um, Dragon's Dogma to you. Can I counter that argument with something else? Do you know what it looks like to me? It looks like Sons of the Forest Medieval Edition. That's what it looks like to me. Like, I know there's no freaky monsters or some bitch with three arms and a handgun that we gave her uh, who's just mowing down um, everything that comes near us. But it looks like medieval edition of Sons of the Forest. That's what it looks like to me. Stats, durability, crafting, and more. Also, there is a second alpha test happening in a couple of weeks, starting on April the 23rd. Whereas the first alpha focused on gathering and crafting and building, this one is focused on the gameplay experience, namely combat and PvP. In alpha 2, we can expect to see Oof. a com- Ooh, that does look pretty. I will give it that. That does look pretty. Combat and PvP. In Alpha 2, we can expect to see a combat revamp with smarter and more formidable enemies, improved targeting and spell mechanics. Combat should be more engaging in this build. They've done world enhancements from lighting and biome transitions to cave exploration. These improvements should enhance the overall atmosphere and immersion of the game, they've said. There's the player versus player, as they've introduced a full, completely PvP zone. And there's also expansions oh. to crafting. Oh, there's a full PvP zone? God, I hope the combat's good. I hope the combat's good then if there's a full PvP zone. Are we are we looking at first person um RuneScape here? With good graphics? <laughs> is that is that what we're looking at here? God, I hope so. I have a question about AFK Journey. Where do they get this much money? Okay, I'll explain that after this video. I'll I'll like draw something that'll make sense to you. Uh how, where they get all this money from. Thing with new crafting stations, additional resources, and magical materials, along with expanded crafting options and recipes. Now, the developer has said they plan to continuously improve the game leading into its early access release, which again is slated to happen this spring. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen, depending on what sort of feedback they get from this second alpha test. Registration for Alpha 2 is still currently open. You can sign up on their website with the testing beginning on April 23rd. Okay, so, so those five games, I think, are the most likely to actually come out this year, uh, which is why I went into a bit more depth and detail when discussing them. The next three are also targeting a 2024 release. Uh, I'm just way less certain about them. We're talking about Blue Protocol, Project LLL, and Core Punk. So yes, Blue Protocol. Ooh. Ooh, Blue Protocol. Mm. <laughs> I played Blue Protocol for three months on five different accounts because they kept getting banned in Japan. Let me tell you, uh, the game's got about a month. The, the game's got about a month to live before everyone who's playing it just goes back to playing um, Genshin Impact call is scheduled for 2024 but here's the thing the global version of this game is being published by amazon who are also publishing throne and liberty now at the moment it seems like throne and liberty is their priority they have been pushing it way more on social <laughs> yep. media and advertising they've been actively announcing closed beta testing whereas i've not heard a peep from amazon about blue protocol in months nothing at all in fact their last uh, activity on the official twitter account was in august 2023 and since then, it has been just not- Amazon actually may have given up. Amazon may have, have chosen to not publish Blue Protocol if they've been that quiet. I mean, it's unlikely. They'll still rake in a bunch of cash from people uh, playing the game. Uh, it's free to play and then getting locked into the gotcha system. That's inevitable. Um, 
but they may they may have realized that if blue protocol fails that's just another failure notch on their belt and they just don't give a fuck like they couldn't they can't handle that anymore nothing absolute crickets now since they're publishing both of these games and they're both mmos we do expect there to be a bit of a gap between the two so that they're not competing with themselves for a player base and since as of yet we don't have an exact release date for let me let me tell you something in blue protocol uh, i didn't show this in my review delves for a player base but i do have to say this her 3d model her tits wiggle around fantastically Whoever did the tit jiggle on in Blue Protocol, top tier job. They they need to be hired by someone else who knows how to build an MMO. Because those those tits, god damn, they wiggle perfectly. There's more physics in her tits than there is in the rest of the game. <laughs> I just got to say that. Since as of yet, we don't have an exact release date for Throne in Liberty, and I expect them to at least have a couple of months of runway after announcing that. Unless Throne in Liberty comes out like late summer, early fall, I I'm really not sure that Blue Protocol is going to make it out in this calendar year. But who knows? This could all change tomorrow. Amazon could all of a sudden come out and announce we're going to be launching Throne in Liberty in June or August, and then that would give them enough time for Blue Protocol to come out in the fall. Like, that could happen. <laughs> as of now, it hasn't, and and again, it looks like they're giving priority to Throne and Liberty and Blue Protocol once again is being put on the back burner, but we will see what happens. Blue Protocol is not as big of a game as, as Throne and Liberty. Even just not, having not played Throne and Liberty and seen the gameplay from a distance, I can tell immediately that Throne and Liberty is going to get more attention from Amazon as a Western publisher because it's just a much bigger game than Blue Protocol. Blue Protocol is... You get your character, there is one path, there's no choice. You go to the one zone that they tell you to go to. Then you go to the next zone that they tell you to go to. It is a linear path. It is a straight line linear path. That's it, right? There's a lot more, even if it's bad um, in Throne and Liberty, there's still a lot more bad things to experience than there are in Blue Protocol because Blue Protocol is a much smaller game. So it's not too surprising to me that they'll put blue protocol on like a back burner and then they'll just worry about um uh thrown in liberty first what happens anything could change project lll is also targeting a launch in 2024 but when it comes to this game they've just been so tight-lipped it's really hard for me to judge uh, other than the gameplay presentation during last year's g star event we i've not seen or heard any <sighs> updates for this game sort of like one you see you see here here we go okay there's two things that concern me here first is the the two minute noodles in the top right corner this means that it's going to be a pay to win game um and this thing right here tells me that they're trying to put this shit on a phone once human this is going to be an open world looter shooter with some interesting looking ideas and we have done a couple of videos going in a bit more detail about it if you want to figure out those specifics but in general i'm pretty in the dark with this one i have not seen any info or details about beta testing taking place i've not seen any hands-on impressions i've not even seen any leaks come out and that happens for basically any game that is getting actively tested you will see leaks on, t on online for people who just don't care about the ndas they will talk about them even if it's behind anonymous accounts and vague none of that has happened for project lll from what i've seen so far so triple l might be canceled for that reason it is very up in the air for me like it could come out this year i am just i've got no way to judge whether or not it's on progress or the likelihood of that happening but it, it could happen it's possible and then there is core punk a game that i am really rooting for for but still seems to have a very long road ahead of it with development having slowed in recent years and the last alpha test showing that they still seem to have a ways to go uh, uh, but they have been receptive to feedback it does appear like they are okay i was i was fairly negative the first time i saw um stuff about core punk but if i look at everything else on this list i, I like it seems to have the best chance of being more playable than everything else on this list aside from maybe pax day right um my big concern with core punk isn't it's going to be a bad game my big concern is what would make people play core punk over playing albion online aside from the fact that it's newer what would make what would make people who like this top-down style go and play this game instead of being like you know what i'm actually gonna go i'm, I'm gonna play this for months and then just go straight back to albion online
right? That's that's the concern I have in my head is what does this game do that much differently? Because you've got locked classes, you don't get to pick that much stuff. Um, it's just. <sighs> It might not be bad, it just might not be good enough. The genre. This is, it's top-down MMO. Uh, but uh, so is so is um, Albion Online, right? Uh, Core Punk reminds me of New World. It's not possible to be that retarded. I don't know. I don't know. I think Core Punk has a better chance of being less of a fuck-up than New World was. I don't think it's going to be, like, I don't think it's going to be Bug Punk the way... Um, a new world became bug world for like half a year lost all its player base put out an expansion look guys we're recovering people played the expansion and then fucked off again right i do think that core punk has a better chance than most of the stuff on this list i just don't think it's going to come out this year i think give core punk another year and a half maybe two years and then we might see something good come out of this are implementing good changes based also what's up tape based on that feedback and there's another alpha plan for later this month and here we'll get to see uh, those recently made changes in action and i am hoping for the best i'm hoping for good progress i'm hoping for improvements because i do still love the idea of an mmo that plays like a moba and i think it has potential i do think core punk has potential but as far as it getting a full release in 2024 that just still seems unlikely to me unless there are significantly unless there's just like significantly more game behind the curtain that they haven't shown revealed at all but yes i'm rooting for them. I like the idea of core punk. I do think there's some cool things about what they've shown and what I've played. Still think it needs a bit more time. All right. So as of now, those are the eight MMOs with launches that are said to be. Okay. So eight MMOs of them. Terrace land. I might play for the final MMO that I play for my eight month long video, just because the fucking workout I'm going to get from Terrace land is going to be goddamn brutal. Uh, the workout that this game is going to give me is going to be like i'm going to be ripped like fucking arnold schwarzenegger after three days of playing terrace land uh once human i'm on the fence about ilgi says it's bad um I, i'm very i'm more negative than positive throne in liberty i'm um more negative than positive dune awakening i'm compromised as fuck about uh pax day uh, again, 50-50 for me. Blue Protocol, fuck that game. Uh, Project Triple L, I don't think I think it gets cancelled. Core Punk, give it two years. Be happening this year. The first half of which I think seem like the most likely. Beyond that, there is a long, long list of other games that aren't coming until 2025 and beyond. Some of which, though, will be getting testing this year. Alpha and beta testing is expected to happen or currently happening. Their Soul Frame, which we might be getting some test of this year, they've said on several occasions that they plan to begin hmm. publicly testing the game fairly early on in the process, even earlier than what they did with Warframe all the way back in 2013. Of course, Ashes of Creation is still trucking along this game gets regular updates but it is still in alpha definitely absolutely playing alpha 2 for ashes of creation um i know this is pure hopium i know i'm i'm fucking huffing hopium through my asshole here but i am a i'm a desperate motherfucker at this point i just want something to be good and so i'm desperate for ashes to be good so I'll definitely be playing that in Alpha 2. I mean, someone bought me the Alpha 2 um, access, so I feel like it would be fucking disrespectful for me to not play that game at that point. Alpha testing with the Alpha 2 testing planned to begin in quarter three of this year, so a full launch is most certainly not happening. Quinfall supposedly exists and is running tests right now. We'll see how that one pans oh. out. And then... Ooh, Quinfall. Ooh, ooh. Mm-mm. There's all the other games, you know, we got like Chrono Odyssey, Arc Age 2, Project Ragnarok, Into the Echo, and a handful of others that are in development coming out of- Okay, fuck Into the Echo, they're doing all that blockchain shit in the background. I read their, their briefing, I found um, their, their shareholder meetings. Into the Echo is going to be dog shit. Um, Chrono Odyssey might be good, I don't know if it is, but I don't think it's coming out this year. Um, what else did he mention? Ragnarok, don't know anything about- um, Arc Age 2 is probably not coming out this year. 
Um, trying to think of any of the others I know. That's that's about it. At some point, but don't look to be anywhere near release. And then we've got those games that I've been talking about for what feels like a decade, uh, Pantheon and Camelot Unchained. I just don't have much to say about those two. Okay, Pantheon Rise of the Falling, I think, is going to be a flop, or it's going to be a super niche game because it's so, like, heavily D&D &D based. Um, I've seen the combat. It's, it's just, it's very clunky, and I don't think that's going to hold people's attention. Games, and it's really unfortunate for what started out all those years ago as promising projects and ideas just where they are today uh doesn't any longer feel all that promising and then beyond all this uh we cannot of course forget while these are the new mmos that are coming out this year and on the horizon we have all the big ones that are getting expansions final fantasy 14 has its dawn trail expansion coming out i believe in the summer world of warcraft has the war within expansion either <laughs> war within oh god oh man i think I think, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think World of Warcraft needs to die. I think they need to make WoW 2 or some other MMO that replaces WoW, but it's such a clusterfuck. There's no, there's no coming back. Either plan for late summer or early fall. Of course, WoW Classic is happening. Season of Discovery is trucking along. There's a brand new uh, yearly update, chapter update for Elder Scrolls Online. Guild Wars 2 has another expansion planned, and I'm sure many of the other existing popular uh, MMOs have updates, but those are the ones that I at least personally am paying attention to. I love how everyone, whenever they talk about ESO, always shows the cinematic because the cinematic is so fucking epic and it's nowhere near what the actual gameplay is like too. And yeah, that is uh, just about it. That's really what I want. I really wanted to just focus on the new MMOs, the actual new games that are coming out this year or could be coming out this year. And as a quick recap, the ones that seem likely to actually launch in 2024 are Tarisland, Once Human, Throne in Liberty, Dune Awakening, and Pax Day. And the ones that are scheduled, but I'm not so sure about, include Blue Protocol, Project LLL, and Core Punk, with the whole other rest of the list being at some point in the future. But there you go. If you are sick and tired of me talking about games that are five to 10 years away from actually coming out, here are some of the new MMOs that are coming out very soon. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. This genre is quite a bit of a mess. That's going to do it for... I don't know if there's going to be eight MMOs for me to play. Like new MMOs for me to play for my big video. I'm going to have to find backups. I'll probably, I'll probably default to Switzor. Uh, maybe ESO. Since I haven't touched those two. Well, I've touched Switzerland, but a very long time ago. Um, ESO, I've touched, but not much. Um, what else? Fuck, I don't know. I've got to find like a backup list. For today, though, thank you as always for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the okay, video. And I'll see video. you next time, right? Take it easy. That, that was helpful. Super helpful video. That's good to know.